Okay, guys, if you're planning to have a baby anytime soon, keep in mind fertility is often impacted by body weight, levels of exercise, and diet. So here to discuss fertility diet recommendations is Dr. Sharar Kavalsi. He is a reproductive endocrinologist at St. David's South Austin Medical Center. Good morning to you. Good morning, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're so happy to have you. I was joking saying this is something I, as a newlywed, need to pay attention to. So you have 11 recommendations for us, right? Well, there are quite a few recommendations, yes, and they're okay. based on the studies that have been reviewed and published over the last few years. And uh, there are different uh, dietary components to it. So yes, there are quite a few recommendations, that's right. And they're based on different studies and the quality of the studies vary. So some of these are stronger recommendations than others. And, and so before we get into them, why is it important to follow these types of recommendations when you're thinking about getting ready to have a baby? Well, um, you wanna optimize the chance of pregnancy. So the studies have looked at natural attempts at pregnancy and they've also looked at fertility treatment related attempts at pregnancies and um, you know the studies that have been published show different components that may be advantageous components of diet that may be advantageous in these attempts all right well let's get to the the top 11 so <laughs> um, the, the important thing is to actually have the right kind of uh, fatty acids, so you want to avoid the trans fats, so those are like fast food types fats, and um, the arteriocoagling fats, you want to try to avoid those, and it's basically the polyunsaturated fatty acids, the omega-3s that are found in fish, and are found in like flaxseed or canola oil that are um, recommended. Um, vegetable oils that are unsaturated, like olive oil or canola oil, again, um, are recommended, and to eat more vegetable protein, like beans and nuts and less animal protein, there is some study, uh, uh, result that has been shown that actually, and there's not a lot of extensive study on this, but the results that are out right now show that lesser amount of red meat is advantageous. And that fish, particularly fish low in mercury, actually is more advantageous. Okay, so you can eat some meat, just make it fish. Yeah, and, and poultry maybe, I mean, there's, there's some hazy data out there too. On okay, that. I noticed whole grains was also on there. That's an important thing to incorporate in your diet. That's correct. So not the kind of glucose low that you would get with uh, other types of carbohydrates, but like the whole grain type of carbohydrate is ideal. Okay, you have some more recommendations for us. Something about drinking milk? Yes, so <laughs> drinking milk, and we're talking about actually milk that has full fat in it actually, as opposed to Really? Skim milk or 1% milk actually has been shown to be more advantageous. So um, small dish of ice cream, whole milk glass, these kind of things or like a full fat yogurt every day may be advantageous. Um, multivitamins like folic acid or other vitamin B type of um, vitamins like vitamin B12 particularly have been shown with uh, good, pretty good results that have improved the fertility rates. Also things like IVF success rates have been better oh, with okay. folic acid, but at a higher dose than been used traditionally to minimize neural tube defects. But the dose hasn't been determined all that well. So mm. again, there's some, there's some areas of investigation still remaining. I also noticed iron was on the list, that you need to make sure you're getting plenty of iron. Right, right. So iron obviously is very important for health and it's important for fertility based on some studies as well. Okay, I really like that I, technically I'm supposed to be eating a small dish of ice cream every day in order to help him. I hope my husband is watching. So eat small doses of ice cream. The guys can day. have some sympathy ice cream too, maybe also oh, as well. Oh, no, no, no. We need him to not have, just me, just me have the ice cream. Okay, we've got a few more recommendations. Let's pull those up now. Sure. <laughs> and hydrating well, obviously, is very key for general health and um, fertility. Coffee, tea, and alcohol are okay in moderation not extreme uh, intake is recommended. And it's interesting, there was a study that was just published the other month that showed that if there's a coffee intake of one to five cups a day for females, that they have a better success rate with intrauterine insemination fertility treatments and no difference in success rate with IVF. One to five cups of coffee a day, not that I'm recommending five cups of coffee particularly, I mean... but this was a Danish study that showed some reassuring <laughs> uh, data there when it comes to coffee intake and maybe some benefit, particularly IUI patients. Daily exercise, of course, is important, and if someone's a tobacco user, um, they should discontinue for many reasons, of course. Now, I do want to ask you, because we've seen some things recently about alcohol consumption and the idea that, you know, a woman should just stop drinking completely if she yeah. wants to, you know, get pregnant or have a baby. Where, where do you stand on that? So there's literature on this and good data on this, and one to two alcoholic beverages a day are okay 
while one is trying to get pregnant. But once they have a positive test, they should discontinue. You should stop. But this is nice. One to two glasses of wine, coffee, and ice cream. Basically, that's all I need to do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good advice for all the ladies out there. Doctor, we thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, this Ashley. Morning. Appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Of course, guys, this will be uploaded onto KB.com right after the newscast. We'll be right back.